In this video, I'm going to show you how to add fractions with unlike denominators. And I'm going to start by doing a problem which may seem rather silly, and it's going to be three apples plus two bananas. Anytime I'm adding or subtracting fractions, I like to write my problems vertically. So I've, I've purposely written this to look like a fraction because the denominator of a fraction tells you the name of that fraction. So I've now written my problem vertically and I've indicated that I have three of something called bananas or three of something called apples and two of something called bananas. Now if I want to combine them, it would make no sense for me to do three plus two and get five and then call that five apple bananas. Instead, I must find something that apples and bananas have in common. And in this example, apples and bananas are both fruit. So I'm going to rename them as both fruit. Now, unlike some of the, 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 the unlike the problems that I'm going to show you that are more abstract, these ones here, I don't need to change anything about the numerator. numerator. I don't need to split it up into more equal parts. Um, I can just leave it as three and leave it as two. So this is not a, a, a perfect analogy, but it does let you see that when I am adding two unlike items up, I must find something that they have in common. So in my example here, I have three fruit and two fruit, which of course gives me five fruit. So let's look at how that analogy can now be applied on an abstract level. So you've already been doing addition with fractions with common denominators. So for example, let's say we were adding 2 6 and 3 6. When we already have a common denominator, it's fairly easy for me to take 2 of something called 6 and combine it with 3 of something called 6. Then I get 5 of something called 6. It becomes a little bit more complicated when I have things that do not have the same name. So for example, let's say I have 2 6, but this time I'm going to combine that with 1 8. So if I write this vertically, 2 6 and 1 8, I no longer have the same quantities. So this would be like two apples and one banana. So I must find something that 6 and 8 have in common. We call these common denominators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what is something that is a multiple of 6 that is also a multiple of 8. So if I need to, out to the side, I can count by 6's. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and so on. I can do the same thing with 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and so on. I, what I'm looking for is something that they have in common. So I see 24 in both lists. We call this the least common multiple because it's the smallest multiple that they share. So I will now use that least common multiple of 24 to find equivalent fractions for each of my fractions in the problem. So out to the side, I'm going to put a new denominator of 24. And now I'm going to look for new equivalent fractions. Now remember that when we find equivalent fractions, we must multiply by some version of one whole because we do not want to change our original fraction, the value of our original fraction. We just want to change its name, how it's looked, and how many pieces it's divided into. So 6 goes into 24 four times. I'm going to make sure that I multiply the numerator also by 4 because what I'm really doing here is I'm multiplying by one whole. 2 6 by one whole is still 2 6. So in, across the top I have 2 times 4 which gives me 8. So this fraction 8 24 and this fraction 2 6 are equivalent fractions. They are identical. They have exactly the same value. They are just split into different amounts of pieces. So I'm going to do the same thing. 
to my other fraction. 8 goes into 24 three times. Same thing to the numerator so that I'm multiplying by one whole. 1 times 3 is 3. And again, I now have equivalent fractions. 3 24 is exactly the same thing as 1 8th. It has the same value. It's simply 1 8th split into more parts. So now I'm ready to add my new fractions. And when I add these fractions, just like I did with 3 fruit plus 2 fruit, I'm going to only add the quantities, the amounts that I have. So I have 8 of something and 3 of something. Those somethings happen to be 24 fourths, but I'm only going to add the amount that I have. 8 and 3 is 11, and what I'm talking about is 24 fourths. So my answer is 11 24 fourths. Let's look at another example. 3 fourths plus 1 ninth. I'm going to write my problem vertically. And the first thing I notice is that I do not have a common denominator, so I need to find a common name. I can count by fours. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. And I can count by nines. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. Notice I don't see anything in common yet. So when I don't see anything in common, I've just got to continue. 28, 32, oh, 36, I do see on the, my list here. So 36 is my least common multiple. Now, you may have noticed that I can simply multiply 4 times 9 to get to 36. That will always get you a common denominator. Oftentimes, we call that a quick common denominator. So if you can't think of something that your two denominators share, a multiple that they share, you can always multiply them together. However, later on when you are trying to simplify fractions, that may cause you more work that you have to do. So sometimes it's better to take a, a few extra moments to think of the least common denominator rather than just using a quick common denominator and multiplying your denominators. So now that we know a common denominator, I'm going to find equivalent fractions. So I'm going to write out 36 as my new denominator. 4 goes into 36 9 times. So I'm making sure I'm multiplying by one whole so that I don't change my fraction. 3 times 9 is 27. And 9 goes into 36 4 times. Again, multiplying by one whole. And 1 times 4 is 4. So I'm ready to add my fractions. 27 of something plus 4 of something gives me 31 of something, and that something in this case is called 36. Here is another example. Let's say we're adding 2 eighths to 3 fourths. If I write this vertically, 2 eighths and 3 fourths. 8 and 4 are not the same thing, so we do not have a common denominator. So that's my first task, is to find a common denominator. Now, if you were to find a quick common denominator, 8 times 4 is 32. That will work, but you will have some simplifying to do at the end. So whenever possible, I try to take an extra moment and see if I can think of something smaller. So just like I did before, if I start listing multiples of 8, and of 4. I'll very quickly notice that 8 is on both lists. So my least common multiple for 8 and 4 is going to be 8. So you'll notice that when, when I write my new denominators here, I don't even need to find an equivalent fraction for 2 eighths. It's just going to be 2 eighths. When I look at 3 fourths, 4 goes into 8 2 times. Multiplying by one whole, so I'm not changing anything. 3 times 2 is 6. And now I'm ready to go ahead and add my numerators. 2 of something plus 6 of something is 8 of something, and that 8 of something is called 8's. 8 eighths happens to be equal to one whole. If I look back at my original problem here, 2 eighths plus 3 fourths, I do want to point out, though, that 
this problem would have been simpler if I had look at, looked at two eighths and simplified it before I even began. Because I can find an equivalent fraction by dividing by a common factor of two and eight, and that common factor is two. So when I divide by one whole, I don't change my fraction. So two divided by two is one, and eight divided by two is four. And if you'll notice now, when I simplify two eighths into one fourth, I already have a common denominator of fourths. So I can just add one fourth and three fourths and get four fourths, which equals one whole. I recommend that you always look at your problem before you begin and see if you can simplify before you start. It often will make your problem uh, less complex and easier to do. So with that in mind, let's look at another example, and this one will be 4 tenths plus 2 fourths. I can see right away that both of these fractions can be simplified. 4 tenths, I can divide by 2 over 2. 4 and 10 are both even, so they share a factor of 2. And 4 divided by 2 equals 2, and 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So 4 tenths I can write as 2 fifths. Similarly, 2 fourths are both even, so they also share a common factor of 2. 2 divided by 2 equals 1, and 4 divided by 2 equals 2. So I can write 2 fourths as 1 half. Now I'm ready to find a common denominator for 5 and 2. If I want to use a quick common denominator, in this case that would probably be the best to do because 5 and 2 are both prime. So 5 times 2 equals 10. Ready to find equivalent fractions. 5 goes into 10 2 times. I'm multiplying by one whole, so I'm not changing my fraction. 2 times 2 equals 4. 2 goes into 10 5 times, multiplying by 1 whole. 1 times 5 equals 5. 4 of something plus 5 of something is 9 of that something, and in this case that something is called tenths. So my final answer is 9 tenths. Here is one last example. 3 twelfths plus 2 ninths. I notice that 3 twelfths is not in simplest form because 3 and 12 both share a common factor of 3. So I'm going to simplify that before I begin. 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So I'm going to choose to write 3 twelfths as 1 fourth and then I will add that to 2 ninths. I do not have a common denominator yet, so I'm going to think of 4 and 9 of what they have in common. I can make a list of multiples, or I can choose to use a quick common denominator. I'm going to use a quick common denominator in this case. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 does happen to be the least common denominator for 4 and 9. So I'm ready to find equivalent fractions. 4 goes into 36 9 times. Multiplying by one whole, 1 times 9 is 9. 9 goes into 36 4 times. Multiplying by one whole, 2 times 4 equals 8. I'm ready to combine my new fractions that both have the same name. 9 plus 8 gives me 17. And the name of my fraction will be 36. Let's look at what that would have looked like if I had not simplified before I began. So if I hadn't simplified, it would have been 3 twelfths plus 2 ninths. And here, now I would have had to find a common denominator, denominator for 12 and 9. Let's say if I used a quick common denominator again, 12 times 9 is 108. Notice now I'm already working with much a much larger number, so my problem is, is going to be a little bit more complicated. When I'm finding... A new uh, equi an equivalent fraction for 3 twelfths. 12 goes into 108 9 times, multiplying by one whole. 
3 times 9 is 27. 9 goes into 108 12 times, and 2 times 12 is 24. So now I'm ready to combine my numerators. 27 and 24 is 51, and the name of my fraction is 108. And you'll notice that uh, my answers don't look the same. That's because 51 over 108 is not in simplest form. And this is an example of a fraction that's not in simplest form, but it's, it's not, that's not evident right away, especially if you don't have divisibility rules for different numbers memorized. 51 and 108 both share a common factor of 3. So I would need to divide by 3 over 3. And then eventually that would give me 17 over 36, my same answer. However, you notice right away that this becomes a much more complicated problem. It is much easier to simplify this right up here than to simplify this down here. That's why I always recommend that if, if you notice that a fraction is not in simplest form in the problem, simplify it at the beginning because it will save you time simplifying at the end.